masternodes. How many of y'all have heard of them before and are wondering what are they all about? Is it a legit way of getting passive income or just another waste of your time? Well, today we're gonna take a look at all things masternodes. So if you're curious about this topic, then just keep on watching. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin from BFB and welcome back to another episode in my ongoing series called Kevin Talks Crypto, where I choose an interesting topic, do a deep dive into it, and then share with you what I learned. So if you learned something after watching this video today, please support me by smashing that like button and subscribing down below. Okay, so let's get started. First and foremost, why do people even care about masternodes? Well, it's potentially a way of getting passive income. And usually when you hear this phrase in the crypto space, it's tied to a scam, but masternodes are not necessarily scams. It's a good way for people to participate when you don't necessarily have the time to do trading or active research to find the best new coins. So what are masternodes though? Well at its core it's just a server or node in a broader blockchain network. But they have some special features that are different than just normal nodes which just hold the blockchain and relay transactions. And these include adding more privacy to transactions, making transactions be instant, voting and governance for different changes to the blockchain network, and even even executing smart contracts. So we have to give a shout out to Dash, which was the granddaddy of masternodes, the first one to really implement it into this protocol. And then since then, many other coins have copied them. So what are the requirements to get a masternode? Well, you have to stake a lot of your coins. This obviously varies coin to coin, but it can be a lot, like a thousand or 10,000 coins even. You also need to have a Linux server that's running 24 hours to serve as your masternode. And it needs to have a dedicated IP address so that other nodes on the network know how to reach that server and there are other unique requirements depending on the coin, but these are some main ones that are pretty prevalent throughout. And as you can tell, this is not for beginners. It usually requires IT experts to be able to set this up. What about rewards? Well, first of all, you get a share of the block rewards for when blocks are added to the blockchain. And the percentage that you get obviously depends on coin by coin basis and the rules they set, but usually these rewards go straight to your wallet address that's tied to your node. So pretty convenient for you. Also, the amount of your reward is different depending on many things. So you have to definitely calculate it. It depends on the coin, whether the price appreciates or depreciates, the amount of coins that you get and the periodicity that you receive them. All of these factors need to be taken into account when you're trying to calculate and forecast how much you'll earn from a masternode. So what does this have to do with proof of work or proof of stake? Because if in your mind, you may think that it's kind of similar, right? You're like maintaining a blockchain network, you're getting block rewards, and that's definitely true. It's similar to proof of stake because for masternodes you have to lock up or stake your coins and if you move them away or unstake them at any time then your masternode is removed from the network. But masternodes doesn't necessarily mean it's a proof of stake coin. So for Bitcoin the miner secures the blockchain and gets 100% of the block reward and a node stores, validates, and shares the blockchain but they don't get any reward. So there's no direct incentive for that. Dash on the other hand has a two-tier model where you have the miner that secures the blockchain and gets 45% of the block reward and then the master node on a higher level that kind of provides higher tier services and gets 45% of the block reward and for the dash master node it requires a thousand dash coins collateral in order to set one up and the source of this graphic is jkcrypto.com. Furthermore master nodes are also set up to benefit the network by incentivizing participation and security for a couple of reasons. First because it costs a lot to set up a node so it's prohibitive for someone to get a majority of master nodes and take over the network by like 51% attack or whatnot. Secondly, because of the high startup costs, you're incentivized to play fair and follow the rules because you bought a lot of coin to get a master node. You don't want that to drop down in price by messing with a network and getting other people to sell their coins. So pretty ingenious incentives if you ask me. Okay, so say you're interested in master nodes. Well, how do you choose one? Well, there are many sites out there like masternodes.online where you can take a look at all the different coins and look at various metrics to do your calculations and determine which one you're interested in. But I recommend that you consider the following. First is their vision and what their coin is trying to do. Second is their team. How active are they? Do they have GitHub commits? Are they actively developing the project? Third is the community. For these masternode coins, community support is huge. And these are all important to consider because these take substantial investment and time to get started. So you don't want to just dive into some random coin, buy some random masternode, and think that everything's going to be gravy. So what if you can't afford one then? Because a lot of them cost 
costs a ton of money to set up. Well, people have created a thing called master node pools where you kind of pull together your coins to get enough to reach that threshold. And these are usually managed by third party operators and they're the ones in charge of distributing the payouts to the people who contributed to the pool. As you can imagine, this has a big chance of getting scammed and them running away with your coins. So definitely be very careful. But there are some newer ones that kind of create these pools via smart contracts. I don't think there are any huge ones out there yet, but I've noticed projects trying to do that. If that's the case, it'd be much safer to join those master node pools handled by smart contracts than ones that are handled by third parties that you must trust. Some popular master nodes that you should take a closer look at. There's a bunch, like I mentioned earlier, but Dash, of course, PivX in the privacy world, VeChain Thor, and Walton Chain as well. They all have varying uses of their master nodes, varying requirements of how many coins you have to stake, but interesting nonetheless to take a look at. So what are my final thoughts? Well, to be honest, I've never really been interested in master nodes myself because I prefer to diversify my investments rather than put a lot of eggs into one basket. But if I had more time to look into master nodes, I'd explore pools. And I also want to note that some projects just add master nodes to entice investors. I don't like those projects and encourage you to stay far away because there's no reason to add those and they're just doing it for financial gains. And finally, if you're looking to get in master nodes, definitely get one for one of the more legit projects, like maybe some of the ones I mentioned just a slide before. Okay, everybody, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please smash that like button, subscribe down below. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll definitely get back to you. This is Kevin and I'll catch you guys next time.